Jacoby Walter is going to make sure 2024 is the fourth straight year the Baylor Bears have someone drafted in the top 16 of the NBA draft. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome in to another episode of Locked On Baylor. I am your host, Cam Stewart of ESPN Central Texas. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. We had yet another Baylor Bear declare for the NBA draft. That's the third one in the last week, but of course, wish him all the best. We're going to see where he might actually go when his name is called in June by the commissioner, and a little bit of an adjustment to Baylor's spring game to the point where calling in a spring game might not be correct anymore. And one of Scott Drew's most trusted assistants over the years made a pretty bold statement yesterday about how the university should reward Scott Drew, not just for his years of building the Baylor basketball program into a national power, but also for turning down Kentucky too, lest we forget that. But first and foremost, we'll look at one of the players that Scott Drew molded into a terrific talent. He already had great talent, but Scott Drew in in his in this guy's year with Baylor molded Jacoby Walter into what will be an Undoubtedly, I think, a lottery pick in June's 2024 NBA draft. Kobe Walter made that announcement on Monday saying he will officially enter his name into the NBA draft consideration. We, we knew that was coming. Um, Eve Misi, we, we didn't, we held out some hope, uh, but he made the announcement back on Wednesday. Uh, during the midst of all this Scott Drew stuff, he made that announcement. Uh, Jonathan Chen with Chachua makes the announcement on Friday. And now Jacoby Walter, the one who was the no doubt he's going into the draft kind of guy, makes the announcement on Monday. We're still waiting to hear from Jalen Bridges and whether he will use his last year of eligibility. Um, I believe that's a COVID year he got granted or if he will go into the draft as well, I suspect it will be the latter. I, I suspect he will put his name into the draft. He is starting to show up on those mocks. But Jacoby Walter came in as a four-star, five-star guy, one who was projected last year to potentially be a top five, top 10 pick in the draft, um, showed some great flashes at Baylor and certainly showed NBA skill. No matter what you guys think of his time at Baylor, because I know there are people out there who will be in the comments saying, he stunk for a month, which I don't even think is true, but uh, you can't deny that he showed a true NBA game at the college level. And uh, what you expected is, is what you got. And, uh, and you got one of the best freshmen in the entire country, Big 12 preseason and postseason freshman of the year, uh, averaging just about 15 points a game through that span as well. I mean, he he was the real deal. And, and we have been pretty lucky at Baylor to, to have that the last couple of years. I know People, including very much including me, um, were critical of, or have been critical really recently of the one and dones. Um, but there are plenty of schools that would that would kind of kill to have a one and done guy, the quality of Jacoby Walter. And we've had one of those just about every year. Um, if you look at him, you look at Keontae George, you look at Jeremy Sohan. Um, this guy wasn't a one and done, but Davion Mitchell was the fourth of those uh, to be top. 16, he was a top 10 pick. Um, and so we've really been pretty pretty blessed with that. And weirdly enough, all four of those guys are guards. I say that weirdly enough because Jeremy Sohan wasn't necessarily a guard at Baylor, although he did play a little bit at that position when everybody got hurt. Uh, but now he's running the point for the San Antonio Spurs. But Walter, we'll just go through his numbers real quick. 14 and a half points on the year. Um, 14 and a half points per game on the year, I should say, just under two assists, over four rebounds, shot at about 38% from the floor, um, which for a 19 year old, uh, I think that's still pretty good. I mean, what he is show what he showed is that he has the ability to be a knockdown shooter. We talk about three and D in this, in this league, the NBA, and I think Jacoby Walter fits perfectly into that. So I st I've been slowly diving in the last couple of weeks into these NBA mock drafts since the Baylor season ended and seeing where these guys would, would go. Um, I liked this from the basketball bulletin 
the write-up they did on Jacoby. Uh, they say a prototypical off-the-ball guard who may provide some versatility as a wing, depending on the measurables, uh, increasing size and strength, blah, blah, blah. Biggest draw is a true floor spacer that can knock down three-point attempts in a variety of play types, but also as upside as an all-around scorer when attacking closeouts. That's what we see from Jacoby. Jacoby's a shooter. Jacoby is a scorer. Okay, and and that that plays in the NBA. I don't know if you guys know this, but that that is big. And he and he's got some length for a guard at, at about six four. He's got a wingspan. He can get to the basket, um, and a, a knockdown catch and shoot guy. That that spacing that they talk about in here, I think, is what's so important. It's getting more and more important at the college game, but it's imperative in the NBA game that you could space out the floor, draw defenders to you, that you're a good enough shooter. That, you know, because anybody can stand far apart, but you need to be a good enough shooter that they respect that. And that opens up a lot of things for you offensively, especially early on um, when you maybe don't get the respect from from the other team's defense. Um, And then at the end here, they do say the biggest skill to ultimately determine his ceiling will be how much he can improve when the ball is in his hands. Uh, But this will not be something asked of him early in his NBA career. And that is a big part of it. I I think of um, there there are guys every year uh, that are big time prospects, t- like top five picks, who they don't know if they're going to be real ball handlers at the next level, which I always find interesting. But um, that is certainly something for Jacoby. He didn't run the point. Uh, he didn't really run the point much in high school. Uh, he had a great point guard with him in in high school as well. Uh, so it, it's something that he has never really done full time at at a high level. Uh, but I, I think it's something that he can be serviceable at at, at the NBA level. But that's gonna that's gonna take some time. Uh, trust me. And, and the good news for him is we're seeing guys all the time now who who are able to kind of pick that up on the fly. Um, wanted to go through some of the mock drafts here and where they have them going. Um, Bleacher Report has them all the way down at 19th to the Cavaliers. Good crop of guards there, and that's a playoff team. So I guess that's a good destination. I don't think he'll last that long. Uh, both the Ringer and ESPN have him at number 11, which is Atlanta's pick, which I love that idea uh, of him playing with Trey Young. I I think that's a fantastic matchup, um, and who knows, to to Jontae Murray as well. Uh, But he is a guy who will be a big-time feaster in the NBA if he's got a point guard at, at an all-star caliber, which Trey Young absolutely is. Like I'm that's a mouthwatering uh prospect of him playing there. And I love what they put. The ringer did this. They they you know do the checks and the minuses, the checks, movement shooter, pull up threat on ball defense, which I thought was a little uh underrated from him this year, and got that dog in him. We saw it. He has got that dog in him. This guy is a straight-up gamer, a competitor. He wears it on his sleeve. He left it all out there every time he took the floor. And that's something that you can't quantify too much of, and I'm glad some NBA mock drafts are taking that into account. They say he has the shades of Chris Middleton, a and guy who's made a couple all-star teams. I think that's a fair pick. You know, Again, a guy who's got some length, you know, 6'5", 6'6", but got some wingspan, Knockdown shooter, uh, played with good distributors um, like a Giroux Holiday for for years in in Milwaukee. I, I think uh, Jacoby Walter is a guy who is going to create his own shot, and that'll develop at the next level. But as a spot up shooter, I like that comparison to Chris Middleton, and I am really intrigued to see where Jacoby Walter is in, in this draft, which is not a great draft, but that could make for some huge discrepancies from mock drafts to real life. So who knows? Jacoby Walter could be taken, you know, six or seven, or he could drop down like like Bleacher Report thinks it, they are and out of the lottery and into the 20s potentially. Um, but that that's going to be exciting prospect to to look for going forward and, and heading towards this NBA draft is Jacoby Walter, our own Jacoby Walter. Today's episode of Locked on Baylor is brought to you by FanDuel. It is playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Like, officially, we're in. Let's go. Baseball's in full swing. FanDuel has your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 
win or lose. So bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel. America's number one sports book. And also, people have been telling me I'm competitive. I think you guys maybe have seen that in some of my rants in the past. I, I think it's fair. Yeah, I do have a competitive side. We all do, okay? My competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it because it's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I could charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like you can in Monopoly, but now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboard show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it, okay? You can team up with your friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store and on Google Play. So a little bit of an amendment to Baylor's spring game to the point where calling it a spring game would be a misnomer. That's coming up this Saturday, April 20th. It is still at McLean Stadium. It's the same time, high noon on the Brazos, but the athletic department announced today that it wouldn't be a game, that it's really going to be run like a normal practice. So if you can't make it out to McLean, Sorry, because it's not going to be streamed. It's not going to be televised because it's a practice, not a game. Um, this is not an unheard of tactic. Other other schools have done that. It's not like an every year thing. No school that I know of. It's like every year it's we're not going to do a spring game. Uh, but it happens here and there. We we didn't really hear a reason as to why. There's there's several reasons as to as to why we, you know we could speculate on. Uh, but overall, my first impression was bummer dude like that's lame it's not going to be a spring game Who who's going to go i mean i'm going to go <laughs> i'm going to go but like like i get it so it could be any number of things um i mean they're installing a whole new offense um they might not want to show their hand in terms of with the, with players entering the transfer portal like they may not might not want to put out there who their starters are going to be what what that is all going to be about they'll, they'll handle those reps internally and in practice. Um, I, I don't, I don't know why, um, but it does stink for us, the fans who, you know, look forward to this event. This is for football sickos and, and fans of the Baylor bears who come out and, and this is a way to get excited. You know, Baylor it, it's, it's at the end of a basketball season, obviously in April, it's, after the basketball season, Baylor's not a huge baseball school, even when they're good, which they're coming around the corner. So this is something that like we look forward to at Baylor and at in Texas is, is this way to see uh, the team showcase its stuff in, in a game setting that we actually can kind of make sense of. I know spring games have tons of like random points that they give out. You don't know what is a sack, what isn't, what score scores points you got to follow along um but it is actually giving you like an 11 on 11 right that that that's what you care about and instead what we're going to see on saturday is drills drills and more drills and if you're a football person like of course you can you can make out good versus bad on on the drills but i don't even we're not even going to see a scrimmage in this thing we're not even going to see a seven on seven from what i'm reading so uh, the big thing that I was looking forward to is looking at these quarterbacks, right? This is a quarterback battle. It's a new offense. Um, receivers, absolutely, as well, because you brought in a couple of those. Like, I want to see what it looks like in real time, 11-on-11, 11 11, or at worst, 7-on-7, seven seven, just to see the ball skills that these guys have. The arm talent on the quarterback, the ball skills on the receivers. Um, like, that's, that's what you look forward to in a spring game. You're, you're just looking at things that could be taken away as positives. Um, but it's tougher to understand what's positive and what's negative if if you're watching a practice. And maybe from the Baylor athletic side, that's great. But from the fan standpoint, in terms of people want to come out and go to the games, I, I, don't, I don't think it is. I don't think it's... 
I'll still be there. And if you had already made the plans, I'd encourage you to still come out and support these guys. But it sounds like to me, if they had the option of not doing it at all, uh, that they just wouldn't do it. Um, and that is, that's just too bad. That's just too bad. Again, I, I, I can understand where they're coming from here. And, uh, there's any number of reasons as to why they would do that, but everyone else in the country does it for the most part, you know, schools who don't know who their starting quarterback is going to be, um, schools that might be dipping into the transfer portal for starters. Like they, they still, they still do this game. So I think it stinks for the fans. I think it's another, I, I know it's not their intent, but it could alienate the fans a little bit, um, you know, who who are planning their day or their weekend around coming to this, and now it's not a game anymore. Um, I think the ultimate thing from a fan standpoint is we're just looking to get excited, man. Because everything the last, essentially two years of this program has been negative. It's two losing seasons, one of which was a, a catastrophic failure in 2023. And it, it the spring game is an opportunity to come out, you know, nice weather, support your team in the stadium, and get excited about something. Get on board with, with Dave Aranda calling the plays on defense. Get on board with this, this throwback style of offense where you're airing it out, points on the board, you know, make them defend every blade of grass. You want to get excited about who's going to be the quarterback delivering the ball to those guys because we don't know who it is yet. And that's unfortunate that that's not what it's going to be. Um, it, it is still a chance for you to see your favorite players up close and personal. Uh, I'll, I'll give it that because I went to NFL training camps every single year because growing up as a kid, you couldn't buy Patriots tickets. You had to basically inherit them. Uh, so that was a way to see your guys up close and personal. Uh, they did also do seven on sevens and 11 on 11s, which was obviously the best part of it. Uh, but I will say if that's someone like, you know, you can't make it out to a lot of Baylor games. Um, this is a, this is a great way to kind of see them up close and personal and see, how this coaching staff is is coaching them up. Um, I don't know if this will lend itself to to more criticism or more excitement, but uh, it's just a bummer that you won't be able to watch this on ESPN Plus if you can't make it out. Uh, it's a bummer for me as someone who would go back and watch those, uh, you know, for shows like this and and talk about previewing the season. But no official spring game. It is just another spring practice on Saturday. Come on out. They will have, and I, I will mention this, they do have like a day of events going on. Um, so they will still be wearing the, you know, the game colors, green and gold. You'll see that, but also you can see the alumni cook-off, which happens before the spring game. Uh, it starts at 9 a.m. at the McLean Stadium Amphitheater. It's got somewhere between 10 and 15 teams. Uh, Pete Friendberg, the old Baylor defensive coordinator, UMHB coach. Um, Glenn Moore, Baylor's all-time winningest coach in softball, is out there. And Mo Porter, the former Baylor offensive lineman, will be out there as well. Would love to actually get his take on practice um, as someone who played in this kind of offense. And, you know, the offensive line's a big question mark. Would love to actually talk to him about that. Um, but that, that's something, you know, come in, get excited, see some, you know, hopefully you get a taste of some of that great barbecue they'll, they'll have cooking up. Um, they'll also have the Michael Johnson Invitational, which usually lines up with this. Uh, that's obviously a big deal. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we'll have a softball home game as well, if I'm not mistaken on that. Yeah, all weekend. And baseball will be at home all weekend. So it's still a great time to come out, support the Bears in a couple of different sports. Just honestly kind of lame that it's that it's not an actual game um that certainly changes what i'm looking forward to uh, on this saturday and, and what to look for from this team but we'll see we'll see it will be an interesting perspective to just kind of see them in a practice being on the matt mosley show during the afternoon i don't get to go out to those open practices to the media open to the media practices i should say um so that will be at least interesting in that respect to take a look but no spring game for the bears Better luck next year in that department. 
Today's episode of Locked On Bayor is also brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. Because when you're hiring for your small businesses, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. Obviously, that's why you want to check out LinkedIn Jobs. It's not like any other job board, okay? It helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actually searching for a new job, but are qualified for the kind of job that you are going to give them. We all do that, right? We're all looking for that perfect job, although we're not really looking. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. You find those professionals, you find them faster. They know that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. That's why LinkedIn is constantly finding new ways to make that process easier. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Back to basketball a little bit. Um, it has been a whirlwind of a month for Baylor basketball uh, in a month that they didn't play a single basketball game uh, here in April. John Jacobs took the job at FAU. Scott Drew was courted heavily to the Kentucky job to the point where his family was flown out to Lexington to see it. And he took Nancy Reagan's advice. He just said, no, no, I'm staying at Baylor. And we all rejoice. It's one of the great days in Baylor basketball history. And I don't know about you, but I was thinking like Thursday or Friday of last week, the very, you know, the quick aftermath of this, I was like, I, I feel like we should be celebrating. We should be doing something. Even though he didn't, it's not a new coach. He just got retained. He just said no to somewhere else. But I'm like, it, it, it had the feeling of, you just signed a big free agent in pro sports, right? Of like, you know, you, you, your baseball team signed someone in late November. They used to do that, actually. Big free agent, late November, early December. And you're like, okay, let's go. Let's get into the game. Spring training, I'm going to watch every inning. Let's get into the games. This is going to change everything. That's what it felt like. I was like, all right, football, who cares? Let's get into men's basketball again. Let's get me to November and let's see Scott Drew out there. And let's just go and win a national championship. Let's go do that. But obviously, we, you can't really celebrate just retaining a coach. Uh, we actually talked to, on the Matt Mosley show on ESPN Central Texas, we talked to another coach who was being courted, and that is Jerome Tang, longtime Scott Drew assistant here at Baylor for almost 20 years. Um, he talked to or Arkansas had reached out to him when Musselman had left. They were pursuing him for his head coaching job. He decided to stay at Kansas State. And he gave some great answers on that. It's on centexsportsfan.com if you want to check that out. Um, and he talked through that whole process about what went into his mind, the family portion of things. And so I went and asked him, I said, Jerome, you know, obviously you and Scott are very much alike. I'm sure you've leaned on each other for decades here, which he said, yes, that's true. And I said, you know, I talked about how it's cool that a coach, some coaches out there can't be bought. Scott Drew is one. Jerome Tang is definitely another. And I said, you know, what What went into that for Scott? Why is Scott Drew different? And he broke down some of the things that they would talk about when these jobs have come up in the past. And then he just couldn't say enough things about great things about Scott Drew. And one thing he said was he was so excited to hear that Scott was was coming back to Baylor and that he was going to turn down Kentucky as we all were uh, very excited. And Jerome said, quote, he deserves to have a statue outside Foster Pavilion and to have his name on that court. Count it. Plus one. Hunt it all the way around. That is perfect from Jerome Tang. And I think we kind of joked about it, you know, start building the statue now, but but also start building the statue now. Like he is a living legend. Um, he deserves all the credit he can from from Baylor and all the plaudits and all of it. He would never say, "Hey, go build me a statue," like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would. But he deserves it. He deserves every single thing you can put his name on. And honestly, I think putting his name on the court is a terrific, terrific tribute to him. Um, it is it is named after the Hurd family, which I'm sure made a sizable donation for that. Uh, so that's one hurdle you got to go through. 
And I think his name should absolutely be on there. We've seen it in the past where schools have done it with an active head coach. Uh, Duke notably did it. Coach K Court at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Um, so it's there's precedent there. Uh, I know there's another basketball coach who probably wanted their name on the court. And to be honest with you, yes, put Kim Mulkey's name on there too. The Drew Mulkey Court. I think that's perfect. Or Mulkey, Drew, Court, whatever you want to do. Uh, those are two of the the biggest the biggest figures in the history of Baylor basketball. Right there. Those two. Uh, so, yeah, put them both on there. But I think it would be a very cool and fitting tribute to have Baylor play their home games on the Scott Drew Court or the Drew Mulkey Court. And I think it says so much about Scott, once again, that that Jerome Tang is saying those things about him. You know, obviously a former assistant isn't going to be like, yeah, they should really run out of, run him out of town. He stinks. I know he's not going to say that, but he, I did not say, hey, Jerome, should he have a statue? No, he said Scott Drew should have a statue and he should have his name on that court. And he and Jacobs both said something along the lines of, we are here in our jobs right now and we've had the success that we have had, the notoriety from other schools uh, because of Scott Drew. And we all felt, you know, that extra special feeling that Scott Drew makes us feel last Thursday. And I think it would be a great fitting tribute to have his name on the court and Kim Mulkey's too, if we're being totally honest. Let's let's honor the people while they are still able to be honored, while they're still here with us. You know, Scott physically here with us, Kim Mulkey's still alive. You know, I don't I don't want it to go down this road where they never get the recognition in their lifetime that they deserve. I, I think that that we should get down that road right now and start recognizing these people, like we did with Brittany Griner. You know, it's it's not that much different there. So anyway, let me know what you think about that. Should they have their names on the court? Drop that down in the comment section below. Are you still going to the spring practice? And how do you feel about that from a fan's perspective? Drop that down in the comments. And what do you think about Jacoby's announcement? Do you think he is a lottery guy? Do you think he might slip in the draft? I go with the former there. Drop that down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you can get up to date on all the Baylor Athletics news. We're the only place that is giving you exclusively Baylor Bears sports news five days a week that's not coming straight from the university. So we're very proud of that. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. We will see you tomorrow on your favorite show, which is, of course, Locked on Baylor.